Uh, really globally, when we think about Olympus, we think about your cameras, we think about everything that you can do with them, but at the same time, uh, you seem to be refocusing on therapeutic surgical devices. Why? Well, I think that this is a decision that the company took like uh, a decade ago, that uh, clearly the future uh, was going to be in, in medical devices. I think that uh, we, we all know what uh, what happened with the camera business, with the, with the with the, since the smartphones came into the market. So I think that the company pivoted very well uh, at the beginning of the last decade. And, uh, and by now, I think pretty much all of our business is medical devices. Nacho, at the same time, we have heard from your leadership that perhaps you could be thinking into selling the science business where it is where you make your microscopes and so forth. Uh, why is that and how does that fit into your overall strategy? Uh, the strategy of the company is clearly to become uh, a leader in the, in the healthcare sector. And uh, our life science and industrial division, what we call scientific solutions divisions, it's, uh, it's definitely an area where we believe that uh, they will do better if they are independent from a company which fundamentally wants to focus our, our efforts in the medical side. I think that this is a win-win for both, definitely for the, for the company that will stay as Olympus. Uh, we will be able to focus our investments and our efforts in, in the medical device sector. And, and at the same time, the new company that uh, will be still under the umbrella of Olympus, but uh, managed in an independent way, they will be able to pursue as well their fates and, and develop and the, their own tactics and strategies and investments. And, uh, and I think for both of us, it will be a great future. When would that happen, Nacho? The company will be split in 1st of April. 1st of April, the company will act, the new company, uh, uh, will, will act as an independent company. You led a number of deals in the therapeutics business over the past few years. Are there missing pieces when it comes to that part of the business that you would like to fill in through M&A or other sorts of deals? There are always missing pieces. There are always missing pieces. I think that we have a pretty complete portfolio in gastroenterology, in neurology, in pulmonology, but uh, there are always missing pieces that, uh, that we can add to our portfolio to complement our strategy. We've been very active in the last uh, 24 months as we closed a number of deals that, uh, that uh, for us is something that uh, we were not used to do. But again, part of our strategy to focus in the medical arena is definitely to, uh, to embrace more uh, merchant acquisition activity. And this is something that, again, our, our growth expectations are pretty high. And it's difficult to maintain that growth expectations only with organic growth. So I think definitely we will continue complementing through the right M&A our portfolio. You've set a goal of 20% operating margin by fiscal 2023. What happens beyond that, out of the other side, potentially, of the pandemic, given that competitors are at around 25%? Well, I think that uh, you, you just say that, right? So I think our competitors, or, or, or some of our competitors, not all of them, but some of our competitors are, are on that uh, on that horizon of the 25%. I think for us, uh, three years ago, we made the promise to come from uh, from uh, operating income that was around 11, 12% at that time to 20%, to be more on the on the mark, on the right mark. We're going to accomplish that. And from there, I mean, our expectation is to continue improving our profitability year by year and steadily. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we do the right investment and we secure our future, right? So I think this is not only about profit, it's about continuous growth and continuous profitable growth. So our plan is to, is to continue improving our profitability, but also taking, taking account that we need to continue investment in our internal and external development. What are you excited about in your product lineup? Sorry, say that again? What are you excited about in your product lineup? Oh, we are excited about, about many things. I think that uh, we, have a, we have a very extraordinary pipeline coming up. And, uh, and even the covering one, I think, is doing, is doing really well. I believe that uh, our, our strategy that was actually presented to the, to the investors in last December is really to focus in elevate the standard of care by bringing products to the market that can make a medical difference, really something that uh, is... Uh, is, is going to improve the, the, the life of patients, but also the, the, the entire healthcare world. Mm. So I think in our pipeline, there are a lot of products that will focus on that and bringing that, uh, that, uh, that added value to the healthcare system. And, uh, and we will continue doing that as this has been our, our pretty much our DNA forever. I was living in Japan at the time when Olympus went through its accounting scandal, and that really was huge and it threatened a lot of the future for Olympus. How much have things changed in terms of governance and transparency for the company since then? 
things have changed dramatically. I think that uh, it was a tough time for the company. I think that the company did a phenomenal job into recovering from that. And not only that, after the recovery, we truly embraced uh, the goal to become uh, probably one of the best corporate governance companies in the world, not only in Japan. I think that we have been making changes in our governance continuously in, the, in our board and, uh, and in activities all over the world in order to prevent that what happened in that uh, more than a decade ago will never happen again. So I'm really proud about what the company did and, and where we are today. Reforms when it comes to governance, when it comes to ESG, have been pushed to the top of the priorities list for Japan Inc. increasingly over the past few years. If I were to ask you what the one thing Japan needs to change right now and what the most important thing would be, what comes to mind? Well, I think that uh, the, obviously Japan has been uh, with, uh, with uh, I mean, very low growth in the last years, low growth to negative, almost negative growth in some years. I think that uh, the, the Japanese economy would require is that companies like Olympus and many others really embrace this concept to become global. I think that uh, the, 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 the world is a fantastic opportunity, but also, also is a challenge for some companies. And I think it's important that the Japanese corporations really embrace that idea that uh, in order to succeed, we need to compete in the world. And for that, there are things that need to change. There are many other things that we are very proud of being a Japanese corporation and, and being there for more than 100 years in our case. But at the same time, there are things that have to change. And I think corporate Japan have to lead that change and bring the economy in Japan up to, up to a better level. How has Olympus and how have you as CEO coped with the global supply chain issues, the logistical disruptions that we've seen out of the pandemic? And what are some of the lessons learned for the future? Well, I think that uh, the last two years has been a kind of a roller coaster for a number of topics, not only the supply chain, but uh, starting with COVID, I think that uh, at first we learn, we learn about a lot about contingency plans and uh, we learn about how to be better ready for those situations because part of the COVID situation at the beginning was really the disruption of the supply chain. Uh, nowadays we're in a different situation. I think now we are in this, uh, this uh, story of, uh, of, of shortage of semiconductors and, and, and delays in supply chain and, and costs going up. I think that the world has become a more uncertain place and I think that for any company what we need to do is first to, to be able to live with that uncertain right so I think that and this is somehow difficult sometimes for a Japanese corporation that we like to plan and to plan ahead very well I think we need to be mm. a little bit more more uh, creative in our in the way we plan our supply chain and accept that uh, that we're going to have to deal with certain uncertainties this doesn't mean that we're not going to make it it means simply that we're going to have to be more open and try different things. I mean, in our supply chain, we are making changes in order to make sure that our, our sourcing of products, for example, is much more broader than it used to be. And, uh, and we are also looking for alternatives in our products that whenever something is not available, then we try to make a design changes so we can use mm. different, different, different chips or different semiconductors, right? So I think that uh, the big learning here for all over the world is that uh, the world is an ambiguous and uncertain place. And for companies that want to succeed, we have to really we have to really live that. I mean, we have to surf that wave and, uh, and, uh, and be able to understand that mm. uh, nothing can be planned three years ahead. And not even the macroeconomic picture, right? So how much mm. that's, for example, what's happening with the Japanese yen now, very weak at that 115 level against the U.S. dollar affect a company like Olympus? Well, I think uh, the, the, the largest part of our business in the U.S. So I think that this, is, uh, this, is, this has been helpful for us. I think that uh, the weak yen has helped us to improve our profitability in, the, in our U.S. business. Uh, but I think altogether, the, the, we, we, are, we are a global corporation and our sales are really well distributed all across the world. So we, we have some, some sort of natural hedging. But, uh, but specifically U.S., I think your dollar versus yen is something that, uh, that has been kind of a, of a tailwind over the last years.